Hey everyone, thanks for listening to the Grow Your Life podcast. My name is Jeremiah Krakowski, and if we haven't met yet, I've been helping coaches and trainers for the last 19 years grow their businesses, scale with offers, ads, and sales copy. And I want to help you grow your business, whether it be the six figures, seven figures, or even eight figures. Now, today I'm excited because I have my friend as well as personal funnel expert who's been helping me and my clients for the past couple of years. I've known him for 15 years. He's one of the best funnel builders that I know at building, designing funnels and the automation to get the most sales. He's built multiple million dollar funnels and value ladders. And we're going to work together today to walk you through how simple it is for you to use funnels in your business so that it can become clear how this is going to work so that you can get vision for exactly what it's gonna be like to make the kind of money that you wanna make as a coach or trainer. So without further ado, help me welcome Steven Robbins. How you doing, Steven? Hey, Jeremiah, thanks for having me, man. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, I'm excited that you said yes to being here. So this is awesome. I'm surprised I said yes to being here. I haven't done this kind of thing in a long, long time. <laughs> That's awesome. Looks like you got a funnel right behind you of some kind right there, so. Yep. It's like all you do totally. is funnels. You you got uh, how many how many kids do you have? I've got one kid, one puppy, and that's a lot. <laughs> that's right. There you go. Awesome. So, tell me a little bit. What got you into making funnels? It actually that's a really good question. It started with something non funnily. I got hired to do something so extremely basic. It was literally making like inspirational memes for a company, like those pictures that you used to see on social media everywhere. Okay. And yeah. it sort of evolved like little by little by little into, Hey, uh, we need help building this out. We need help putting this together. And I just kind of had to do, you know, it was kind of baptism by fire. I was kind of thrown in there and had to learn a lot of it as I went. But thankfully, I mean, I found tons of amazing coaches and resources out there to really refine it. But I got started probably the most simple, basic way I could possibly imagine, you know, now, awesome. now I'm building out things that are really complex in some cases or not even complex, but they just do a lot of volume. Um, just mm -hmm. trying to make sure that the funnel is there to get the result that we set out to get. So that's, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> And I remember when, when, when we met, I actually shared some of my story. I was working for a company, uh, Danny Johnson, um, and, and I was helping make videos and then did some marketing with Danny and you were actually working for the same company. You actually knew Danny even from, from church way before yeah. that. Um, and then that's how we met and we, we used to hang out and that was way back when I think I made a lot of the worst decisions in my life as well. So I'm telling <laughs> you, Steven, did too. it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Steven has seen me at my best and my worst and everywhere in between, which is awesome. So it's, that's why it's kind of an honor to even have him on here, which is so cool. Kind of full circle for, for our journey here. Um, so this month we actually did this thing that I came up with this random idea. I was like, let's audit people's funnels. And Steven went ahead and audited some people's funnels and came up with this. And one of the feedback that we heard was Steven finally gave me the clarity that I could actually do it, that I could actually take what's in my head as a coach, as a trainer. And I can see clearly the path of how I'm going to reach that level of making seven figures or making six figures. And so that's what I want to do for all of those that are listening today. If you have an idea, if you're a coach, if you're a trainer, we want to walk you through some of those ideas to help it start to become real for you. I think that, that un until you have a vision for something, it's not really real. And I think a lot of people, they, they, they know what they want. They see the end goal, but they're like, okay, what's in between there? How do I get there? And so my goal with this is that together, Steven and I are going to actually help fill in those gaps for you and make it very clear how simple it actually is. I know Steven mentioned he's doing some more complex funnels, but the truth is you don't need to do a complex funnel to get those kind of results. Usually what happens is a lot of people, they'll make a million dollars and then they go complex to get to that 10 to $20 million range. And that's where it gets complex. But for you to even make a million or even honestly, $5 million, it, you don't need to be complex. And I think that's where a lot of people miss it is they think that it has to be so complex in the beginning when in fact, simple sells. Simple is what gets results. What have you noticed, Stephen, when building funnels with people um, that are just getting started? What's the number one like 
best piece of advice that you would give somebody who they're a coach, they're a trainer, and they've heard about funnels, they've heard about marketing, but they're kind of overwhelmed by all the stuff. What would you say to them? Yeah, that's a great question. You queued it up really well. And I think that probably the biggest obstacle that people get tripped up on is like you said, the complexity. I mean, there's a bajillion different terms and types of funnels out there, but really the key is just keeping it simple and straightforward and just deciding where you want your you know, ideal customer to get to what's their destination and the simplest path to get them there. And that's really what, I mean, (laughs) that's really all I build out. Yes, there are some complex funnels, but the best ones, the fastest result ones typically are really surprisingly simple. And I kind of want to, I'm I'm excited. We're going to kind of demystify some of that complexity today because it's easy to get overwhelmed if you're not a professional funnel builder, you know, but there's really only a few things you have to put together to actually get people onto your list and actually a starting ascending them through your, um, your, your ladder, your value ladder. Okay. So I, I want to actually unpack what you just said just a little bit with a few more questions, just to, just to help people understand this. We talk about ascension of yeah. value ladder. Um, but something that you said in the, in the beginning is, is that you're basically moving people, a customer to the desired end goal that you have. Explain what that is, because it's like a coach isn't going to show up at their house and tie them up and throw them in the back of their 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 <laughs> truck. And t- like, that's not what we're talking about, moving people to right. where you want them. <laughs> right. Right. But like, essentially, though, how does a funnel help move people's focus in right. that way? So basically, you're taking people who are online in our case, in the digital world, whether they're coming from social media or an email list that you may have, hopefully you have, um, various places on the internet, and you're taking them through a series of pages, essentially, where your first step is getting them to take a specific action. Usually it's getting their name on your email list. So they're filling out their information and then hitting a submit button. And then there's a process that follows that, like following up with them, you know, what's on the page after they hit the button or what happens after they hit the button. You know, there's Can a you few pull up processes. one of those here real quick, actually? That you yeah, have. Let, me, let me share my screen. I've got my map, my funnel map up here. Yeah, so this, this is, is awesome. A great example. If, if people work with you, this is actually something that you're you're offering to even help people with is yep. is mapping some of this out, and then you actually you build it for them too, right? Right. Oh yeah, I've been That's building awesome. funnels for several years now, uh, and this is don't be overwhelmed by this at first if you're unfamiliar with it. But this is that first page I was talking about. So you're taking people from social media or wherever they are online. We'll put it that way, mm-hmm. and then you're directing them whether it's through advertising or um, referrals or your email list or some kind of retargeting um, to this page. And this page has something that will solve a problem for them or will help them get to their destination or their goals faster, Mm -hmm. like a shortcut. Um, There's- I'll pause you there. How do they know that it's gonna help them? That has to do with the copy Mm -hmm. and the messaging. And, and, and if you're listening to this podcast, I actually have a number of episodes that I've done in the last month that talk about specifically the copy for your funnels and, and the sales copy and, and the messaging and, and how to dive into that. I have a number of trainings on YouTube as well that kind of dive into that, but I haven't really mapped it out this way. So if you feel lost on some of, well, how am I gonna say that to people? Go check out some of those episodes because I really do a deep dive. It's like 20, 30 minutes of content just on how do you say those words, right? This is more of an overview for people of kind of how we move them along there. So what you're yeah. doing is essentially you're taking people from the internet, social media, or an ad campaign or a podcast like this, and you're sending them to one page on your website. Correct. And that's kind of like a dirty little secret among funnel builders that a lot of them won't tell you is the funnel won't even work unless you know who your audience is and you have a good message behind what you're trying to offer them. Mm -hmm. So like (laughs) if you're just putting a bunch of pages together and hoping somebody will go there, nothing's going to happen. You'll Mm -hmm. have miserable results. (laughs) You'll have people bouncing off the page. You'll have, if they buy something, they'll get a refund. You don't want to do that. You really want to make sure, take Jeremiah's advice, get your offer dialed in, get your messaging dialed in. That's kind of like the secret sauce of a funnel. What actually gets people from point A to point B on you know the, the brain, the mind level, um, directing them, leading them 
telling them what to do. It's all extremely, extremely important. <laughs> but then so, these are the mechanisms and kind of the engine that does that because yeah. if you just have a bunch of pages with text on them and like you're telling people to go somewhere, it's almost like a, like a really bad treasure map or like one of those geolocation, geocaching adventures, you know, that we used to do. Yeah. That's not what we want people to do. You want to make it easy for people to go through the funnel and to get the information that they're wanting. So explain to them kind of how this works to do that. Sure. So like we said, you got your people coming from somewhere online to the first page. They put in their, usually their email address, bare minimum. And a lot of the times their first name, sometimes more. Um, and then once they hit the submit button or the confirmation button, whatever you have there, they're automatically redirected to the next step in your funnel, which in this case, I'm looking at a three day challenge or a boot camp funnel right here. Or an online um, event or something like that. That's like three right. days, five days. You could even exactly. do a, a one day or a two day. Yeah, exactly. It, it It's funny. You'll see the more types of funnels you go through, the similarities are <laughs> pretty yep. consistent. Uh, so one thing that we like to do here this is something that we highly recommend um, is having an upsell page right out the gate. So what that means is somebody puts in their information for free and then we give them the option to get something extra um, with a small amount of money. They're paying to get more. Um, one thing that's worked super well is like a VIP pass where it's usually like a Q&A. So they come to the, the free event if it's a live video in a Facebook group or a webinar or a Zoom. And then if they bought the extra content, they get a private link that leads them to another one, another room afterward where it's only the people who bought it and they get extra content, whether it's Q&A with whoever's speaking um, or interviews with experts, whatever you want to deliver there. This is a really good way to offset, for instance, the ads cost of your funnel um, or if you do it really well, this can even pay for the, the ads cost. You can yep. profit on a free challenge by having an upsell page right here. Mm -hmm. And all it is is between the opt-in page where they gave you their information and the thank you page. Because that's the next step is once they buy or don't buy, either way, we're going to tell them thank you on the next page. Mm -hmm. And I have it branched off a couple of different ways here. There's Let's a reason pause for that. here. Explain the welcome series and the follow-up. Yes. Okay, great. Thanks for bringing me back to that. So when they put in their information, there's really two things that happen. There's some behind the scenes that can happen as well, but not only are they getting automatically redirected to the next funnel step, mm -hmm. but they're also getting added to an email list. This is usually done through a CRM or an auto autoresponder program, like, you know, MailChimp or Aweber or whatever it is that you're using. And we have a series of emails that we set to go out automatically to the people who put their information in so that we're basically reiterating how they can get what they came here for, mm -hmm. or if they still want to upgrade, how to get the upgrade, you know, here's another chance, but we're sending them a series of these emails just to make sure that they're well taken care of. They don't feel lost or confused or forgotten. I mean, the better you are at staying connected with people in lots of different ways, this is just one of them, the better the results are going to be at the end of your funnel. And through the next funnels that you do, because you're probably going to have more than one, especially if you're doing a value ladder like we were talking about before. Now, let me explain why you're going to actually do a series of emails and not just one email that welcomes in. Um, we've tested this. Here's one. The, the first thing we do a series of four emails. Um, we've done this with tens of thousands of leads for free events. People are never upset that they got sent four emails. <laughs> to join a free event. They are actually thankful and grateful all the time. So if you're worried about sending too many emails in your welcome series, um, it's, you're actually gonna have more complaints if you don't send more emails. Uh, the second part is if you only send one email, um, the amount of people who actually show up consume the free content, like you'd think it's so amazing people would consume it, but they don't, they get busy. They, they, they are dealing with gas prices and inflation and, and their child puked on the floor and all that <laughs> themselves. And so they are not remembering about your event as amazing as it is. So you have to keep showing up to them and doing that. And we even include usually reminding people on the day of the event that it's coming up an hour before and even multiple emails like that. Yeah, the, the human attention span has only gotten smaller with the, the increasing amount of distractions in our lives and in our world. So yeah. really keeping all these touch points really helps keep them focused. And like I said, the goal is to get them to a destination. So if you forget to follow up with them in email, 
or yeah. on the right kind of redirects in your pages, they're not going to ever get there. So just taking care of people. I mean, I kind of view this as a highway and you want to have lots of road signs that tell them they're on the right road, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. or, or, Hey, get back. Have you ever been on the road and your GPS is like, you need to turn around. <laughs> you know, you missed your exit. That's a great these are, point. These are a great way to redirect that. Cause all roads lead to the, the final, the boot camp, the three days yeah. that you want them on there um, or the recordings to it. Exactly. Right. Yep. So we're just keeping people's focus on getting to the end result. For us, the end result is getting them to the end of this funnel and onto the next funnel. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's why we have that here. That's that's just one set of emails. We also have a set of email follow-up that we do when they buy. If they purchase the upsell here, if you have one, we also want to make sure that those people are taken care of as well, telling them, hey, thank you, first, for, first and foremost, or congratulations at the very least. And here's the instructions or here's the information to to get what you paid for, right? You know, like you don't want your dollar to get lost. You want to actually get the value out of it. Uh, So we follow up on as many steps as you can really uh, here. And again, like what Jeremiah was saying, people are not going to be mad about getting more than one email. I've been on, there's one email list in particular where there was a time where I was getting eight to 10 emails in every single day from this one marketer. And I mean, <laughs> it was overwhelming to me, but I realized I wasn't their ideal person, but they have yeah. extraordinary result, results with their business. They're doing very well, you know? So, I mean, people will do more than that. This is really just one a day right here. The welcome, the first, they're immediately getting welcome. Thank you. Here's your next step. And then the next day is when they're getting the second email. And then the next day is when they're getting an, another email. So it's like not even all at once. Um, so I also have another branch off here. You can kind of see all these arrows. Um, I think this is where we had left off at this step is I have a page usually for, thank you for people who purchased the upsell and also a page for people who said no to the upsell because there's certain information that I want to keep from the people who didn't buy. You know, I don't want them to get on the paid thing if they didn't pay for the thing. So I have a page that just gives them all the information for the free thing only. And then if they bought it, then they get all of that information. Plus here's, it's again, it's follow-up, making sure all the road signs are going the right way. Thank you so much for buying. Here's how you do what you came to do, what you purchased. And then after that, we have the event itself. And for an event like this, the challenge in bootcamp, the best results I think we've both seen still consistently are like in a Facebook group. Um, Currently, Mm -hmm. who knows when that might change. Things change a lot online, but usually they're put into a free Facebook group. Um, which has tons of benefits like the engagement. In other words, people seeing other people doing comments, you know, um, reactions and asking questions and posting live video and stuff kind of, there's like, there's something really powerful about not feeling alone. Um, Other people doing what you came to do, you know, so that's a great benefit of a Facebook group. Plus it's easy to manage. It's free and pretty much everybody already has one and is used to using it. Yeah. So we, pour them all into the Facebook group on the thank you page. Usually we have like a few steps, you know, step one, go to the Facebook group. <laughs> and then there's a button that links to the Facebook group. It's, it's really clear. It's never like, Hey, make sure you go to Facebook and type in the search bar to get to here, you know, see us, hope you get there. You know, it's like, we try to, we try to plug every hole that we can think of. So anytime you can put a button to where you want them to go, do that. <laughs> there's it'll, a great, it'll always help. right there. <laughs> Billion dollar advice right here. You want to know what creates billion dollar companies? You might be like, well, I don't want to create a billion dollar company, so I don't even care about that. If you want to create a million dollar company, if you want to create a six figure company, this is a huge piece of advice. The more steps that you can reduce and remove from somebody getting the information they want, the more money you can make. That's right. And so like even just having an extra step where somebody has to search in a search bar for something versus you giving them a direct link to it could actually be a difference in your sales. Yeah. It's true. People get lost so easily. That's another point I want to bring up is when we're sending people through a funnel, I had someone ask not too long ago, they're like, Hey, on the, the marketing page, can I also put a link to my book? And I was like, no, (laughs) the simple answer is no. But the reason is I have a very specific goal. And if we have anything distracting from that goal, it's going to kill our results. So only this usually in, in a lot of cases, it's not even on a website, it's on a landing page where there's no menu. There's no links that take you off of the page. The only way you can get out of it without going to the next step is if you manually go manually go and click the X button. 
what I build here, the only way to move forward is putting your information in and hitting the button. And then you go to the next step. Like it's, I mean, imagine again, a highway, like there's walls on the sides. Usually, you know, it's not like a regular road right here, turn left here. It's, we want to get you to this step next. And so there's nothing to distract you from that. Same with here, when you're going to say, Hey, join the Facebook group. I don't want to distract you with, Hey, go search for us on Facebook. Hope you make it. No, it's yeah, go follow us. us. Go right here. Go, go <laughs> leave us a review. Go, go right. read this book. Yeah. People need to be led. I mean, a lot of times people need to be told what to do, especially if mm-hmm. things are confusing. I mean, if you have, if your clientele is older, especially, I mean, doing all the work for them as much as you can in this manner is really important. And here's uh, another great piece of advice is pretend like you're leading a group of, of, of five and 10 year olds. Yeah. <laughs> um, like simplify it that much because, okay. And, and, and I, and this is not to be offensive to anybody that people are stupid. Right. It's just that when you're bringing somebody into an environment like this, most people don't go through this type of an environment. And so the more that they can feel taken care of, the more likely they are to actually buy from you. Yes, that's exactly right. And that's, that plays in every step. Just like we're saying here, no distractions on this page. In the email, we're constantly redirecting them to the next page or inviting them to step back in at this step if they didn't. Yep. We're always trying to get them to go down this highway where we want them to go. Um, and then, you know, once we get them into the Facebook group or wherever the live event is happening, we've got a little bit of a formula that we follow for the three days. Yeah. And so usually it's like day one, you're unpacking the vision of what the promised result is that you gave them. You then kind of give the promised result on day two. You kind of give like the meat and potatoes that they like sort of signed up for. That way you can deliver it. And now here's the thing. Are you going to have people complain on day one that you didn't actually give the promised result? Yes, you are. And that's okay. And they will never show up to day two. But what the truth is, is they actually proved that they actually weren't your qualified customer at that point. And that's what I love is actually by doing this model is day one sort of weeds people out by not just giving it to them at first, you're, you're, you're sort of training them to be patient just a little bit and working on framing. You need to frame what it is that you're going to teach them. I heard a, a phrase that the best way to sell online is to create the environment for it. And by working on the vision that people have, you're creating that environment for them to buy. You're creating that environment for them to be most likely to receive the information. Okay, so that's what day one is all about is kind of setting the stage for day two to give information and then day three, you sell them something and I will say this do not ever do this model of a three day event without having something to sell at the end. That is probably one of the most unwise things and the biggest way to flush money down the toilet is to not have something to sell at the end. (laughs) Okay. And so, and, and so then with that, then they go into the offer series and then the offer series is, is a series of usually emails twice a day written from different perspectives, answering the different objections that the person will have. And what we'll usually do is actually pull those from, if we have an upsell that has a Q and a in it, we'll actually pull the objections from that upsell and handle them in the offer series. We'll pull them from the comments, the questions that people asked. We'll answer those questions that people had about our offer. So oftentimes we'll we'll have, for many of our clients that Steven and I have worked with, work through a a three-day challenge like this. And we'll do the same challenge six or seven times and pay attention to what are the most common questions that are asked. And then we'll literally put those into our offer series. We'll literally put those into our content. That way we're leading people with exactly what they're thinking. Almost like we're reading their mind. People will be like, how did you know I was thinking that? Well, because 3000 people before you or 300 before you said the exact same question. And that's how you really dial in your messaging. Here's what's cool is, is once you do this, by the way, then you're going to want to go back and probably change the messaging of your actual initial landing page. We're doing that with a client right now. We ran the same challenge six times, realized hmm, it was almost good enough, but we need to change the angle just a little bit. And, and, and by doing that, you're able to hone in more and more. The more niche you get, that's where your money comes in and your profits come in. Now, this model of the three-day challenge or boot camp, um, the other thing that you'll want to try out, again, if you don't have a big email list, you don't have a lot of followers, doing it for free is a great way to test it out, get your feet wet. 
Um, but the way to make the most amount of money is actually running a three-day challenge boot camp where you charge for it. And, and you run it as an event where they have to pay you 47 or $97 to join for three to five days. Those people that are willing to pay are way more qualified than who show up for a free training. Okay. So Steven, here's a question that I have for you is if somebody's just getting started doing this again, we tried to make it as simple as possible. Can you simplify this even more for people yeah. to yeah. talk about like, I would say if they even just focus on that opt-in page and the thank you page and maybe the welcome series as three things, they don't even necessarily need to do the upsell right away, though it's recommended. They might not even need to do a three-day boot camp. This same model works if they just want to do a one-day like a webinar. Let me touch on one thing real fast before we leave this one right here. Super important. Just as important as having the welcome emails is reminder emails if you have a live event or a pre-scheduled event in some way, we usually do bare minimum one day before the event happens. We're telling them, hey, the event is starting. Here's how you get there. Here's how you access it. Here's how you participate. And then also one hour before. Now you can also do more like the morning of or two days before, depending on how far away the event is and uh, how thorough you want to be on your follow-up. But these are just as important as any other piece of follow-up in this entire series is reminding them. Because again, people forget People have things that go on in their life, emergencies, circumstances, or just forgetfulness. <laughs> so having that in there the same way as these, you can schedule them out, um, is super important. Awesome. So, Explain right. like in the simplest language how somebody could use this and get started and maybe put something out there in the next week or so. Yeah. So, I mean, the basis of this funnel, is like the, the foundation of it is having a way to collect people's information as they get to your page and then getting them the message, like telling them how they're going to consume what they came here for. So you really, the the smallest, simplest version of this funnel is opt-in page, thank you page. And, and then from there, however, you're going to deliver the content, whether it's a download button or a social group or, or Zoom, whatever, you're following the same rules. You're just keeping it really simple, directing them from point A to point B or A to Z and you're following up with email and any other ways that you do have set mm-hmm. to follow up with people. I mean, it, a lot of these funnels are built on the same process. It's either opt-in thank you or checkout thank you. <laughs> That's kind of yeah. like the basis of every single funnel that I know of for the most part. You know, uh, does, that, does that seem like it simplifies it a little bit? It, it does. And scroll down to some of the other funnels that you have here on this page here. I know you had a couple yeah. of them. So then here's the next funnel that we have here. We, this is like an ebook funnel. Looks kind of similar. Again, opt-in page, right. uh, upsell, thank you page, offer series. The difference is instead of them joining an event, your ebook sort of takes place at that event. Yeah, it's like an instant gratification where the second they get to the confirmation page, they can download it. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, a, there's another approach I've seen where you can delay that while you're telling them you know, what they can buy here as well. This is one way to do this where they're opting in. They have an option to take an upsell, which can just be, again, maybe you're elaborating on the ebook or maybe you're adding to the topic. Um, There's a lot of different angles that you can take in here. Just make sure that it's valuable and it helps them solve the problems and it matches with the audience and the offer. I mean, like you want things to be consistent throughout. Yes. Otherwise you're gonna lose people. (laughs) Uh, And let's talk about that real quick. So let's say that you have an ebook that's about how to get more clients in your marketing, but then you have an upsell on how to um, how to build the right graphics on your website. That's a little, we'd think that that'd be the same customer, but those are completely disconnected offers. Right. Um, and so, and I see a lot of people make that mistake in the beginning because that's the only content they have. Sometimes you need to create a new piece of content for your upsell that matches and complements whatever your main opt-in is. So for instance, if you have a book on the topic of marketing, say, hey, I did a five-part training series right here for $47 about, and then you literally reiterate the same topic as the free ebook. Right. <laughs> and then right. that becomes the upsell. Another another um, example of an upsell is like, if your offer created a new problem for them, let's solve that in the upsell. For example, if the offer is how to get more people on your email or on your marketing list, maybe the new problem that they have is they don't even have a marketing list, you know? So it's like, here's how, you know, you can have something in here that solves that problem for them. You know, here's, here's the simple process. 
for getting an autoresponder plugged into your funnels and using it to communicate with your list, seven bucks or whatever your offer is there. So you're basically solving a problem that you created for them is a another option you have for your upsell. That's and awesome. And following up with email and then redirecting them to the thank you page so that they can consume what they came for. Mm -hmm. Super important. And then you make an offer series with them in that, but you also want to make your offer in the ebook and in the upsell at that point because there's not an event that they're going to. So you yeah. don't you don't want ever want any point of your funnel to where it just stops. And again, this is another amateur thing that I see a lot of people do is they they give, they deliver content and then there's no call to action. And I've even heard people say, "Well, I don't want to seem like I'm needy. I don't want to seem like I'm like needing them to buy my friends. They they're not going to see it that way." And, and I actually used to be somebody that thought that I'm like, I'm going to deliver them so much value with no ask. And they're just going to buy from me because of that. Unfortunately, that was a very, that is a very wrong way of thinking. Um, you need to have some kind of a call to action at the end of every single thing that you deliver to people, including a free ebook, including your blog posts, your podcasts, your, your emails, different things like that. Yeah, that, that's a great, that's, that's so true. And Another way that I've seen that implemented that I like is what's com commonly referred to as an offer wall. Mm -hmm. So like on your thank you page, let's say we're looking at the free ebook. Here's the download button for it. Here's how you get it. Below it can simply be their next steps on the page itself. Plus you've got it in the emails, you know, plus you're telling about it. If you have a welcome video, hey, your next step is, you yeah. know, whatever your verbiage is there. But these are usually your next step or by the way, you might also like, because the bottom line is, Whoever came through here came to you for solutions, for your help, for your your um, ability to see what they can't see. And you're telling them, here's some more stuff that's going to help you. It's things that you might not even know that you don't even know yet, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's not even like feeling like I'm needy or something. It's this is a way to serve people is telling them how to get to the next level, you know, how to take that next step, whether it's with you or whatever they're doing. Um, but it's I like to think of it as a way to serve people. Tell it, you know, yeah. you're not leaving them hanging here either. Just like you're not leaving them hanging when they first stopped in and you're, you're reminding them or you're telling them, you know, repeatedly how to get what they came. You don't want to leave them hanging on the last page of your funnel either. So tell them where to go next is kind of the bottom line. You know, you got to from point A to point B, but guess what? There's a point C too here. You guys got to get there, you know? Yeah, so just yeah. kind of implementing various ways to get them to the next step. Hey, Steven, do you think you could, um, export this uh, scroll down real quick and show them all the different funnels let's we're not going to talk about all of them sure. right now because we just don't have enough time here but keep scrolling yeah. down um yeah. so we have the mini class funnel right there again opt-in page upsell mini class kind of takes the place of the challenge or the ebook but you follow the same process mindset practical application keep scrolling down some more uh yeah, all the rules offer all the rules apply pretty much to every single funnel type. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're following up, making sure the distractions are gone and you're simplifying it and directing people where to go. Keep scrolling down, just all, all of them. Show them the different Make ones sure. you have here. Keep going. High ticket. Yeah. Okay, so here's here's the thing. Uh, Steven, do you think you'd be able to export this and we can give this as a PDF to everybody uh, that's listening to this podcast? So that'll be at my website on the episode of this podcast. There'll be a link to a Google Drive link to download the PDF uh, of this for you to reference yourself later. Now, here's the the last thing I want to talk about is the high ticket funnel. And this is, that looks a little different than the rest of the funnels. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Explain what's going on here. So generally a rule of thumb that I like to go by is the more you're asking from somebody, the more personal you want to be with them, the more like time you want to spend with them. Money Not necessarily not necessarily saying you've got to jump on a six hour call with somebody, but we're just saying for, for something like this, high ticket is usually in the thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars and sometimes more. So making it really personal, um, high touch is a term that I've used for this kind of a thing, getting them on a phone call or even better. Now, everybody knows how to use a zoom after the last couple of years. And you've got to, you have the ability to see somebody face to face. So what we're doing is we're having them apply here. For the high ticket in this case there can be an opt-in here instead that's just name and email but an application really kind of helps frame somebody up for selling themselves on why you know they're trying to tell you i want to be in your program and here's why you know i want to work with you further and here's why 
Um, plus it puts a little bit more time for them. Like they're spending more time giving you the information to handle all of their problems, offer mm -hmm. them solutions. The application can give you so much information. Usually on here, it can be, you know, what do you struggle with most in your business? What is your goal in your business? Like, these are usually questions that like a traditional salesperson has to and, hand, um, sorry, handle with somebody anyway, but we're really getting to know them in an application. And then that goes to usually a booking page. I didn't have it on here. I could put it on here, but um, something like Calendly is a really good yep. tool where you can integrate it with. Like, yeah, go to the website page. Calendly. This is actually going to be a hugely valuable to your yeah. funnels. If you're wanting to like book calls with people, um, and, and I think they have a free level that works for most people, don't they? Uh, yes, they do. They do. Yep. Uh, there's free and paid. You can get yeah. different integrations with the paid, but the free works really well. I mean, you can do pretty much everything you need to do with the free one. And then you basically sync it up to either your Google calendar, your, you know, your Apple calendar and tell it, you know, these are the times I would accept an appointment. And then yeah. somebody can go in and, and choose what time works well for them. So cool. it's, it's really handy. You can kind of see all the features and how it works on this page here, but Calendly awesome. is probably my, my recommended tool for that. And, and we're going to put a link to your Calendly on the, this as well, where they can actually, if they want to um, have you build their funnel or do a consult with them about their funnel, they can schedule a time with you. By the way, think of it this way. This podcast episode is a little bit of a mini funnel for what Steven and I do. It's yeah. kind of a more of a high ticket funnel, right? To work with Steven's going to cost you a couple thousand dollars, you know, to build out the whole thing. Working with me, my coaching starts at fourteen thousand dollars. And so if you want to do a consult or a discovery call with me about coaching with you, where I help you work on your messaging, your strategy, your marketing and build all that out, you can schedule that on my website at jeremichakowski.com by clicking on the link that says one on one coaching. Can you pull that up real quick? The link over at my website. And we're actually going to yeah. show them what that looks like here real quick. Um, so like if you go over to my website right here, okay, you're on this podcast episode, you're kind of in my funnel. If you listen to my podcast, I sort of treat my podcast like a mini class funnel. Okay. And at the end of it, here's my call to action. I'm giving it to you. So you click on 101 coaching, scroll to the bottom of the page all the way down, see some testimonies right there. But at the very bottom of the page, it says schedule a discovery call. Can you click that link, Steven? Yep. And so right here, you can schedule a free 45 minute discovery call with me. This is my Calendly link where new clients can schedule a time with me and we can go over if they are serious about one on one coaching with me about doing that. So you can go over to my website, schedule that call with me to talk about building your business together. If you just want the funnels done, you can schedule that call with Steven with the link that's at the bottom of this. Steven, thank you so much for your time here to show people all of this truly like I think anybody can do this no matter what their business is, no matter what their niche is. Do you have any final words of, of, of wisdom for people? Uh, if maybe again, they're still feeling kind of overwhelmed by all of this. What's the first thing that they could focus on and, and really what, what are the potential results that they could get by building a funnel like this? That's a bigger question than it sounds at first. The first rule I would say is keep it simple. Second rule is make sure you've got your, your, you know, your ideal customer or your avatar set up, lined up, um, and your offer and your messaging match that person. I mean, it's, it's so crucial. Like I said, it's like the dirty little secret that most funnel builders don't want you to know because that's kind of like the fuel for the whole thing, you know? <laughs> uh, and then getting started, just taking action, whether you have a landing page builder or a funnel builder yourself, just getting in there and starting somewhere make it really simple. If you have to a thank you or opt-in page and a thank you page is, you know, the first step for you. And if you don't know how to do that, if you don't have the time or you don't have the focus because you're busy building your, your content, uh, reach out for help. Somebody like me would be happy to help. Um, I'd be happy to take your there call you and see, you know, what we can do. Awesome. Thanks, Steven. This has been great. I think this is really going to help people as well. Um, feel free to reach out if you guys have any questions about your funnel, your messaging, things like that. 
Um, you know, we'd be happy to help point you in the right direction. I have so much training on my YouTube, on my podcast about finding your, your customer avatar, about your messaging. That's, that's kind of where I dive into. Most of my business is kind of really diving into that and really honing in your messaging. By the way, <laughs> just a case study for messaging. Uh, we tweaked the messaging for a client and it got a 500% increase in the results that they got from a losing campaign that was losing money to being profitable just by tweaking one word in the copy that changed the messaging. And so that's how important the avatar is, is that's what really is like the difference maker between, okay, is this a profitable funnel or is this not? <laughs> it's getting the messaging down. But I think having a funnel is so important. Even if you don't have your messaging perfect, having a funnel is extremely valuable and Steven's here to help you with building some of that as well. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. It's a lot of fun. All right. Grow your life, everybody. If this episode has helped you, be sure to share it with somebody. If you got somebody that you know that's building funnels, share this episode with them. Make sure that you go through the other episodes as well of the Grow Your Life podcast. There's so much content for you for free that I give away on my YouTube and the Grow Your Life podcast. It's going to help you if you're a coach, if you're a trainer, to get the results that you want. We'll talk soon, everybody. Have a good one.